I think the idea of an integrated West really is out of date. Chinese leadership now, I think, is best applied in the global institution. I want to know which impact did the COVID-19 pandemic have on the development of globalization? And the question is, will we eventually come back to the world we were familiar with before the pandemic? Well, the short answer to that is no, we will not, because we never go back to the world as it was. Now, the, the pandemic itself throws light on that in the sense that uh, worldwide, we have scientists working on uh, the uh, viruses and uh, developing vaccines, exchanging information. This, if you like, is a global process and illustrates the advance of globalization, at least in the sphere of uh, science, technology and the rest. So the, the driving force behind what happens in the world today uh, comes not from this underlying pressure towards increased technical control of not just of disease, but also of climate, in, increase of weaponry. So when I talked with, um, you know, Dr. Martin Yak last time, he told me that if the West really wants to understand why China has been so successful in fighting the epidemic or pandemic, um, it should first learn about Confucianism and sh should, uh, should uh, actually, uh, should the West uh, um, actually learn something from China? Should them or uh, could, could them have uh, learned something from China? In a way, of course, we see the uh, Confucian ethic uh, certainly as a, a very important aspect of China's whole cultural tradition. Certainly, the two intimately connected. Um, and I also would say that the practices associated with Confucianism, in particular, an emphasis on learning the ancient books, uh, rising in society through education, those things are still very deep factors, I think, in Chinese society. The West should not forget the fact that the Chinese Communist Party uh, builds on traditions in China, which go back thousands of years. And in particular, that tradition of rising in society through knowledge and education. The, the Communist Party is also an educational movement. And uh, it, it, it uh, foregrounds cultural value, ethical factors ahead of purely economic factors. Mm -hmm. and, and that's crucial, I think, for the West to understand. And it does mean that when you respond to something like the pandemic, you actually appeal to a general sense of consensus around social values. So the party is drawing on on, on China's tradition. And, and to that extent, I would agree with Martin Jakes uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we should never forget the, the historic foundation of uh, Chinese social order. I would add that uh, what the uh, Communist Party does, of course, is in addition to that, provide a very strong driving force from the center. So the central control of Chinese society is obviously immensely more effective, particularly with modern technologies and so on, immensely more effective than it ever could have been in imperial times. And, and, and that makes a huge difference. If there will be a uh, Asian uh, century, um, is the West ready to, for, for such a century? Or is the West uh, happy for that? The, the West itself, insofar as the West at the moment seems to cover most of the world, it will absolutely fragment. Uh, it, it won't be regarded as an entity in the way that the Americans would like it to be. 
And indeed, the current efforts of the American President Biden to create some kind of League of Democracies is already uh, verges on the laughable. I mean, uh, verges on the laughable in the sense that uh, basically, he seems to want anyone to join it who happens not to like China. Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of politics they have, doesn't matter what kind of regime. So I, I think the idea of an integrated West really is, uh, is out of date. It is out of date. And from that point of view, Chinese leadership now, I think, is best applied uh, in the global institutions, getting them to focus on global goals, getting them to, uh, to look at practical projects and setting an example, setting an example to the world, for instance, in handling global warming and developing solar power and so on. Um, China has got the resources and, of course, the political system which enables it to make big decisions and come to those decisions rapidly and put them into effect. That is the um, that is the comparative advantage which China has vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. I would like to know um, what's your take on, on common prosperity. China is a very interesting case, I think, in the last uh, fifty or so years because. Uh, 50 years ago, there was very little of the kind that you could call a welfare state, very little indeed. Over the last 50 years, the amount of public uh, support for education and health has increased all the time. That is an important factor in the creation of a common prosperity. But So uh, you, you've, got, you've got the ingredients in China for a highly prosperous nation. You, you've got a hardworking population. Uh, and at one and the same time, you've got, I think, an administration which understands the need every so often to redress the balance of the rich and powerful in favor of those who have been less successful in economic competition. Because we have to understand that hard work alone does not create wealth. It's also competition. And, and uh, I think, again, the Chinese administration has shown a great deal of wisdom in the way it's managed competition uh, for the benefits of the population as a whole. Could you please um, tell us your thinking on those, you know, the past nine, ten years of China's development? What's the uh, most, you know, uh, important developments in China? I think one of the important features of the last 10 years has been raising the profile of the party to represent uh, values of a broadly moral, social and ethical kind, and therefore using the party very much as the social conscience of the nation as a whole. And uh, the, the, the more the party itself can accept that role and at the same time be accepted in general as, if you like, the conscience, mm -hmm. then, and, and that, that to my mind is what has been happening in the last 10 years, then, then the future looks very good. Mm -hmm.